Hilda is a popular animated series on Netflix and is based on the graphic novel series by Luke Pearson. We follow Hilda as she moves to the city of Trollberg with her mother and her deer fox, Twig, where she discovers new friends and fascinating creatures. The series has many unique characters, but which of them is the most good and who is the most evil? Hey guys, I'm Brad with Wicked Bench, and this is Hilda Characters, Good to Evil. This series is not over yet, as its third and final season will be released later in 2023. So, major spoilers ahead. Like always, we'll be starting with the most pure, noble, and heroic characters before working our way down. These characters are the good. For the gold medal of good, it's going to Twig. Twig is as pure as they come. Twig has always selflessly been by Hilda's side, ever since she freed him from being trapped by rocks. Being with Hilda and Joanna is all the payment he ever wants. When traveling with Hilda, Twig's willing to protect her with his life. Some highlights are when he saved her from a mother eagle when she was very little and then protected her again in the same area years later. When facing off with the red wolf in the same episode, he had run away from home because he felt alone and he felt that he had to join the other deer foxes in a cosmic migration. Twig initially joined his parents, but he ultimately came back to Hilda when he realized that she was who he wanted to be with. Are you going to stay? but he's also very friendly with their friends, as he frequently joins them on their adventures and aids them whenever he can. In conclusion, Twig is a very good boy, and we can't think of anyone more deserving to be this high up. Earning the silver medal of good is Hilda. At first glance, it might be easy to be deterred by her flaws. Hilda is a free spirit, but also can be bratty, deceitful, and especially reckless. This is hardly surprising because she is a kid, but she takes recklessness to a whole new level. Hilda frequently makes rash decisions and goes to insane lengths to get what she wants. However, these decisions almost always come from a very good heart. Hilda puts herself in danger to help anyone, even when she shouldn't and when they don't deserve it. She helped reunite a giant with his old friend, dealt with Amara to rid David of his nightmares, and when she put tide mice on both David and Joanna so they could have good luck. She does have selfish moments, like when she wanted to access the nowhere space and when she had a falling out with Joanna at the end of season two. It's not my fault that you sit around on your own all day. But in the end, Hilda always does the right thing, and she stands is a great kid in our books. The bronze medal of good goes to Hilda's mother. Joanna is a nurturing and fair mother, but is stern whenever she has to be. She doesn't always get along with her daughter, but she won't hesitate to comfort her whenever she's feeling down. It's evident that Hilda gets her good nature from her mom, but her mother is often more practical and restrained. Throughout the second season, her relationship with Hilda becomes more strained, until she finally calls out her daughter for her deceit and justifiably grounds her. You're not leaving this house without me until I say so. She can be overbearing, but it comes from a mother's love. In the movie, Joanna is shown to be vulnerable but still determined to get Hilda back no matter what. But Joanna isn't perfect either because she chose to trust Alberg rather than Frida and David to get Hilda back. But mothers aren't supposed to be perfect, and Joanna is a shining example of a loving mother. Next is Alfred Aldrich. Alfred established himself as a friendly and diplomatic elf when he first made contact with Hilda. He helped her find a way to make peace with the elf kingdom, even when it violated protocol. Even after Hilda's house is destroyed, he still chooses to go with her to Trollberg so that he could write reports about the city while living with his new friend. I'd like to hitch a ride with you. Throughout the series, Alpha always goes out of his way to be helpful to his friends, like when he traveled with the Raven to help jog his memory, and when he and Twig searched all over the forest to bring Hilda home. He's not exactly the most brave elf, and he often proved to be powerless in stopping Hilda from making reckless decisions, but his knowledge, meticulous note-taking, and his good intentions make him a vital and cherished member of the family. Now we have Tildy. Tildy initially appeared to be just a kind old woman in Hildy's neighborhood, but in the second season, we find out that she actually was a powerful and wise witch with a sassy side to her. Tildy still is very friendly to Hilda and her friends and acts motherly with her former student, Kaisa. She dislikes the draconian rules of the Committee of Three and occasionally puts them in their place. But when Tildy was younger, she had a brief encounter with a gentleman and she cast a spell on the magazine that he left behind. She acknowledged her mistake and aided in preventing the time worm from eating Hilda. Tildy meets the same man who's actually Hilda's neighbor again, but doesn't tell him who she is because she knows when to leave it in the past. Her magic is as potent as her good heart. Next is David. David initially was very timid and somewhat cowardly, though this was mostly justified. He also had a short attention span and always had a bug in his hair. David usually was always reluctant to help his friends in scary adventures, but went along with them anyway because he cares about them. He also is a lot more judgmental than his friends, like when he correctly suspects Expected that Victoria Van Gale was hiding secrets both times that he was there. I think something funny's going on. 
Bar. Over the course of the second season, David gradually becomes more bold and brave, especially when he joined a Viking clan, so he could touch the medallion of Sigurd and lose all of his fear. Afterwards, he became a more grounded character, as he still was cautious and clumsy, but not nearly as afraid as he was before. Next is Frida. Frida has had her ups and downs. First, she was mostly concerned with being perfect and staying organized. She befriended Hilda mostly for her own gain, but warmed up to her after a while. They and David developed a great friend dynamic, but it grinded to a halt when Frida lost her book. Yet, she was not grateful to Hilda or David when they tried to get the book back, and it culminated in a fallout. It would get my book back, but it didn't, did it? Frida then made things worse for herself by befriending the Maras and almost became one herself. Thankfully, she was able to reconcile with her friends and it only got better from there. In season two, she starts shining as a character, especially when she starts learning magic from Tilde. Frida may not always be confident in her abilities, but her intelligence and focused mind mean that she has the potential to be a great witch and a great friend. Now is Bartel. As leader of the Lost Clan, Bartel is a proud warrior who always favors combat. His family was originally exiled from their land due to having one signature short on the contract. Bartel was justifiably angry and refused to sign any contract. A Braga will never sign another document. But he's also shown to be amicable and friendly, like when he treated David well when he was a hostage. After the contract was burned, he's been a loyal ally. He and his clan played a vital role in chasing the bell keepers, and they tried to trick the elf delegation by swapping Alpha with one of their members. Bartel may always choose violence as a first option, but there's no denying that his heart is in the right place. Next is Kaiza. Kaiza is a librarian who commonly assists Hilda and her friends when they're researching magic. We later find out that she's actually a witch who has her own labyrinth of work studies that lead to a secret society of witches. Kaiza is designated as the keeper of the books, but always was Tildy's talented student. She originally had insecurities about her modest job, but she was reassured by Tildy that she was a success. I'm not the witch you taught me to be. In one instance, Kaiza helped Hilda, Frida, and David take take care of the tide mice that had infiltrated Jorts. She used her magic to suck up the mice with a vacuum and surprisingly worked well with David. She isn't higher on the list because she was unable to help the kids when Hilda was turned into a troll, but that was because witch magic didn't work with troll magic. Despite that, Kaiza has remained a fan favorite and still remains a powerful ally. Next is Raven, also known as the Great Raven. He was a prominent ally of Hilda's throughout the first season. After being hit with a rock by Trevor, he lost his memory and had to rely on Hilda to get it back. He forgot almost everything, including his own name and even how to fly. Oh no, I've lost my memory. After being reminded who he was after almost drowning, he's able to access his true form as a Thunderbird. We next see him when he goes into Hilda's house to ride out the devastating storm. Despite his clear reservations, he still takes Hilda and David to the weather station. He then takes Hilda to the center of the storm to calm down to weather spirits, which wouldn't have been possible if he had not flown her there. He takes David home but still comes back for Hilda and is genuinely terrified when she falls from the collapsing station. He then proceeds to save Alpha and Twig from the forest giant. We don't really see him after season one, but we can confidently say that he's a brave bird. Next is Trila. Trila is a bit of a mixed bag. On the one hand, she provided food and shelter to Hilda, Joanna, and Twig when they were stuck inside the mountain, but then she proceeded to use old troll magic to swap her daughter Baba with Hilda. Trila explained that she did this to keep Baba safe in Trollberg. This is no place for her at the best of times. It's a selfish action, but it's done out of maternal love. Trila subsequently treated and cared for Hilda as if she was her real daughter, but was resistant to reversing the spell. She was remorseful for what she had done and truly loved Baba. Towards the end of the movies, she not only protected Baba, but also Hilda and her family from being crushed by the falling debris of Trundle's death. Trila is imperfect, but she does show that there is such a thing as a good troll. Next is Baba. Baba is the adorable but rambunctious baby troll that lives lives with Trila. When she and her mother come across Hilda, Joanna, and Twig, she was nothing but friendly towards them. Baba's innocence is apparent in every scene that she's in, yet it's also apparent that she is a handful. She chased a butterfly outside the house and walked across the street without any social awareness. It isn't her fault since she was swapped with Hilda without having any say. Her low placement on the list has nothing to do with her, it's just that she hasn't done anything that heroic other than biting Alberg's hand. This is understandable.
understandable because she's a little child. At the end of the movie, we even feel that Baba has developed a little bit and adapted to Hilda's home more seamlessly. Finishing off the tier, we have Tantu. Tantu was kicked out of his old home due to a misunderstanding. He seemed perfectly content with being alone until Hilda decided to befriend him. Tantu initially did not enjoy Hilda's company, as she unintentionally got him into trouble on more than one occasion. He didn't reciprocate her kindness for a while, but he did save her life when they were being chased by the same giant dog that had trashed his original home. We've gotta go now! He also saved Hilda and Joanna from crashing into the Trollberg wall by cooperating with Hilda's old Tantu to cross into the nowhere space. Since then, Tantu has been a helping hand in the household. He still thinks Hilda is annoying, but he's an important ally on certain instances. He may be somewhat selfish, but he's not Hilda's most selfish friend. Now we have the characters that walk the line between good and evil. These characters are in the gray area. First is Gerda Gustav. Introduced in Season 2, Gerda was Allberg's loyal deputy and assisted him in protecting Trollberg from the perceived threat of the surrounding trolls. She is a true follower of the law and is genuinely committed to keeping Trollberg safe. Gerda is actually a more ethical and reasonable person than Allberg ever was. She did almost accidentally drown a few elves with water, but that was under the reasonable assumption that they were spirits since she couldn't see them. She was willing to negotiate with Alfer when he pretended to be a deputy spirit, and she favored more practical solutions to the ever-growing troll crisis. Gerda began to slowly resent Allberg when he didn't value the well-being of Frida and David when they were alone in the forest, and took it upon herself to save them from the exploding blimp. She still stood on Allberg's side and partook in all the draconian measures set by the safety patrol, but it's apparent that Gerda has a moral compass as she wasn't willing to let David and Frida be publicized for Allberg's vanity. These children have had a traumatic day! In the end, she ultimately chose not to fire at Trundle, and Trollberg is honestly better off with her as the new head of the safety patrol. Next is Lindworm. As the lone resident of Cauldron Island, which is actually the back of a kraken, the Lindworm is content in her decorated botanical home. For a long time, she was used by elves to burn contracts for them, yet she was never given any form of payment. I'm tired of giving away my drink given talents for free! The Lindworm heavily values plants and flowers, but never came anywhere near Trollberg because of her severe social anxiety. She almost ate Hilda, Frida, and Alfer, so she wouldn't get any more visitors, but she ultimately agrees to a deal. After she gets some urban flowers, she gladly burns their contract for them. We see her again after she was falsely suspected of attacking ships at the harbor. Despite being in imminent danger, the Lindworm refused to leave her island because she wouldn't back down from a potential fight with Allberg and the sailors. Once the Kraken is awakened, though, she promptly stops fighting and ultimately agrees to get David and the elves to safety. Not the friendliest dragon, but she's proven to be a moderately reliable ally. Rounding out the tier is Woodman. Woodman is selfish and greedy. He primarily uses Hilda for his own personal gain. He just walked into her house without knocking or any acknowledgement and threw wood in the fireplace so he can read his book. He didn't consider Hilda to be that close to him, but was willing to let her into his home when she was curious about the giant she saw. Woodman occasionally helps Hilda find the answers to her problems, gives out good wisdom, and now considers Hilda to be his friend. However, he has done egregious and inexcusable things that put Hilda in danger. He once sold her off to a forest giant when he lost a bet, but that was just so he can steal back the stuff that he previously lost gambling. I was hoping you'd help me reclaim some items I've lost. There was also the time he tricked her into coming along with him to a ghost ship so that he could steal a coral sextant from the dragon, which almost leads to him, Hilda, and Twig to be turned into dragon as well. Woodman was very close to getting into the evil tier, but he has just enough redeeming qualities to keep him out. Finally, we have the baddies. These characters are the bad and the evil. We're starting off with Trevor. Trevor is a bully with an even worse mother. He's always trying to look cool, but frequently gets mocked and teased by his fellow bullies. We'll cut him some slack since he's still a kid and hasn't had a good role model. That being said, he has a few standout moments that don't do him any favors. In season one, he and his friends threw rocks at innocent birds and even landed a hit on Raven. Nice! Check out this rock. He then locked Raven in a cage and almost drowned him, though this was accidental. In the second season, he and his partners in crime threw snowballs at Hilda, David, and Frida, causing them to spill their vegetable stew. On top of that, he appears to have little to no redeeming qualities and has only ever acted as a minor antagonist. But he's still harmless, and that's why he doesn't rank any lower. The bronze medal of evil goes to Trundle. As the main antagonist of the movie, he used to be known as the Mountain King. Long ago, Trundle was able to convince the trolls to unite 
unite under his rule. He wanted to attack Trollberg, but was stopped when other trolls opposed him and his followers. Trundle was imprisoned in a cave without his eye and bells, acting as a gate, but he successfully manipulated Hilda into feeding him, cutting down the bells and getting his eye back. He lied to Hilda, yet he didn't immediately attack afterward. After leading the trolls to the city, all Trundle did was break down the wall. He didn't even fight his brother, instead having the other trolls bring him down. Trundle's plan was evidently to get the humans to attack him, which was supposed to awaken Ama and destroy Trollberg from beneath. The plan almost works, as he's shot with a cannon by Allberg. The fact that Trundle didn't even resist his demise or attack the Trollberg citizens reveals that he wasn't that malicious. He may have had ill intent, but his actions pale in comparison to the other antagonist. The Silver Medal of Evil goes to Eric Allberg, the head of the Safety Patrol. He was the series' main antagonist by default. Allberg portrayed himself as a charismatic and brave hero who sought to protect Trollberg from the supposedly evil trolls. In reality, he was an egotistical narcissist who craved the glory and praise from the citizens. He believed that the bells were the best way to deal with the trolls, despite those same bells doing more harm to Trollberg than good. He frequently took all the credit for Hilda's victories, ignored Gerda's advice on not escalating the troll crisis any further, and put all of Trollberg in danger when he killed Trundle with the cannon. What's worse is that he didn't care for David and Frida when his blimp exploded, which proved that he only really cared about himself. It can be argued that the vast majority of the destruction in Season 2 was Allberg's fault, and it could have been so much worse if Hilda hadn't forced him into Trundle's loose red eye. This finally made him understand what the trolls were really doing, and he made his forces stand down. Nothing. We do nothing. He then graciously chose to step down from the safety patrol for good. After he won a medal for his genuine bravery, even without his redemption, Allberg wasn't a monster. But it's best for him to enjoy his retirement. And the gold medal of evil goes to Victoria Van Gale. She was only ever known to Trollberg for her weather broadcast, but it turns out she was a mad scientist who was controlling the weather with her weather station. Actually, calling her a mad scientist would be a massive understatement. Victoria actually kidnapped a little weather spirit, which subsequently caused caused a massive storm to form over Trollberg. She didn't have malicious intent, but still took an innocent being and forced it to power her machine. She almost condemned Trollberg citizens to a frosty death, which was only stopped when Hilda convinced the weather spirits to debate more constructively. Once Hilda found out about the sealed weather spirit, Victoria desperately pleaded for her to not release it, even when the weather station was being ripped apart being a livid weather spirit. Please, you don't know what I had to do to catch it. After the weather station was destroyed, Victoria Victoria moved to an old windmill and initially appeared to have changed her ways. In reality, she was actually using the windmill as another destructive machine and even conjured her own artificial tantu. Victoria's goal this time was to access the nowhere space and build homes so that humans can populate there. Her selfishness almost caused Trollberg to be sucked into a dark abyss, which means that she put the city in imminent danger twice. Victoria ultimately allowed herself to be engulfed by the abyss while Hilda and Tantu got to safety, so she wasn't all bad. She deserves her fate to be isolated from the rest of humanity because it's clear that she has not learned her lesson. Her actions were the most catastrophic in the series, so she's ultimately our most evil Hilda character. Before we go, let's hand out some center medals. The Darwin Award goes to Victoria Van Gale. While there were some contenders for this, Victoria's actions were the most foolish and almost resulted in massive casualties. The Pride Medal easily goes to Eric Allberg. I mean, really, who else could it have been? Allberg is a personification of pride, and his actions speak for themselves. The Greed Medal is won by Woodman in a landslide. Who else would sell a little girl so they can steal treasure that he lost fair and square? <laughs> Real classy, Woodman. And finally, the Sloth Medal goes to Woodman. He's by far Hilda's least helpful friend, and he doesn't even try to hide it either. All right, guys, that's the list. Let us know in the comment section if you agree with our ranking, and tell us what we should cover next. Remember to hit that notification bell and binge our Good to Evil playlist, where we break down the morality of the characters in your favorite cartoons, shows, and movies. But most importantly, stay wicked.